Welcome to In The News. I'm Ron Jacobson, sitting in for Mark Golub. And today in the news, we will connect with people on the ground in Paris to give us an update on what has been going on on there with all those incidents of hate crimes against the Jewish population of France, which, by the way, is today the third largest Jewish community in the world after Israel and the U.S. We'll first turn to Sasha Regenwurz, who is the president of the Jewish-French Student Union, who has been in the forefront of almost every confrontation against the Jews at the universities across France. Then we will turn to Simone Houdin, the director of the Paris branch of the American Jewish Committee, the AJC, who, as an official representative of an international Jewish organization, also deals with the authorities to try and compel them to do something more efficient to make this atrocities, a wave of anti-Jewish incidents in France, go away. Okay, time now to welcome our first guest tonight, uh, Sasha Regenwurz, who is the president of the Jewish Student Union in France. Bonjour, Sasha. Comment ça va? Can you hear me? Yes, Sasha. How are you? Well, um, I'm personally good. And um, as I understand your questions, there are a lot of um, people asking in America about the situation of uh, Jews in France. And to be honest, this is a real concern. This is a real concern as uh, in the past few months, and especially in the past two months, we have had to experience the repercussions of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, in the French campuses and overall in the French, um, in the French society. And um, we had already been struck in France lately, uh, not only by the killings in the city of Toulouse, and also uh, recently by the killings in the museums of Brussels, uh, that was perpetrated by a, uh, by a French person. But um, lately what has been a worry was um, a sort of a step, uh, a step in anti-Semitism that was going through, which is uh, the, um, going from individual violence to collective violence. The fact that um, during uh, anti-Israeli protests, synagogues were attacked uh, by, by crowds, by uh, tens or sometimes hundreds of people um, was was certainly very uh, uh, very worrying. So this um, now uh, makes for us a very big challenge to find new ways to combat anti-Semitism um, and uh, make sure that the French Republic is ready to uh, challenge these uh, these issues. Now, Sasha, you were in you still are in the front line of all of this, and I want yes. to ask you, how bad is it right now for the French jury? Well, it's very difficult to talk about the French jury as a whole. We heard a lot about the future of uh, the, the French jury or even about the Europe jury. To be honest, I uh, was a little... Um, um, uh, I, I was not at ease with the title of uh, Newsweek a few months ago that was entitled uh, Exodus for the Jews in Europe. Uh, there is a very uh, big diversity of uh, Jews in Europe and especially in France. Um, we can talk about difficulty for uh, Jews who wear uh, uh, signs of, of, of Judaism in certain places in, of France. Uh, so, Sometimes they can be uh, threatened, insulted, because they're viewed as, as, as seeing uh, um, uh, yarmulkes, for instance, or wearing a, uh, a necklace with the Star of David. Uh, but, one, but, it, but it's important to stress, and I would like to stress that for the American audience, that the French government has been adamant uh, in its position to condemn anti-Semitism. And uh, both the president and the prime minister have been very clear that it is for them um, uh, important to fight anti-Semitism. Now, the problem is we cannot simply retort to security. We cannot simply argue that um, the, the, the more secure the synagogues are, uh, then, then we will be fine. Uh, what I would like to, 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 to say and... Uh, and, and highlight is that anti-Semitism is not only a threat for Jews, but a threat to the French Republic as a whole. And I believe that um, there are not enough voices in France that uh, denounce anti-Semitism, and that this should be a concern because when Jews are threatened, the whole country is threatened in its values and its democracy. 
and we are trying every day uh, not only to uh, defend the Jews when they're attacked, but, but, but we're trying to go in schools and universities with various programs against stereotypes to try and, and, and challenge the discourse and prevent anti-Semites from, uh, um, from, from um, uh, being open about uh, their hate against Jews. Uh, one of these fights has happened on social, on social media and especially on the internet. We were at the forefront of the uh, trial against uh, Twitter uh, two years ago and we uh, sued the website Twitter because there was a very sharp rise in anti-Semitism on, on Twitter and after uh, one year of uh, legal battle we won the trial that led now to uh, the fact that there is um, a report and flagging system for every Twitter users. And this makes a huge impact not only in France but all over the world against hate speech. Um, this is also a concern when we see that sometimes uh, websites like YouTube can be used in France by anti-Semites to uh, uh, target a very wide audience and especially youngsters. And there are um, ideologues like, for instance, uh, Dieudonné, who used to be a comedian and who is now a very active anti-Semite, who uh, can reach out to uh, millions of people in just one video. And uh, this poses a lot of challenges. We have a different vision of, of freedom of expression in, 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 in France. We believe that uh, whenever hate speech uh, is pronounced, uh, this spreads to our democracy, and this can be easily underst understandable when, when, when we know French history. But so, I, I want to ask you, Sasha, because you, know, you are very much in the forefront. I mean, if someone searches your name on YouTube, there are hundreds of videos showing you at rallies, at confrontation, in TV stations in France. How dangerous is it for you being, you know, kind of the voice, the one that, uh, you know, speaks about this in the media? Have you been threatened your life or have you been attacked or, or is it, you know, is it still a democracy where everyone can say what they want to? Uh, don't worry for me. I know what I'm doing. Um, my, my, my concern is really to try and uh, make sure that Jews in France feel positive, uh, do not feel that the, this country is not theirs anymore. There is a history, there is a presence of Jews in France for over 1,000 or sometimes 2,000 years. And uh, uh, I really want to uh, make clear that uh, Europe is not a lost continent, uh, that uh, it is very important, I believe, for Judaism uh, not only to uh, uh, be active in Israel or in, in the United States and Canada. I think there is a very important plurality and, uh, um, uh, and value to uh, the presence of, of, of Jews in Europe and especially in, in France and in various cities across France. So um, uh, even though we are living at difficult times, one also needs to remember that these difficult times are uh, aggravated by the fact that we are going through uh, an economic and social crisis in Europe and during these difficult times uh, minorities are always targeted because people are looking for scapegoats. And uh, while the situation is harsh for Jews in France, it's also very complicated for other minorities, Arabs, uh, Blacks, um, who uh, are confronted to other difficulties, uh, discrimination when they are looking for jobs, uh, discrimination by the police. So um, what I'm trying to argue is that uh, we need to, the French society needs to overwhelm this challenge as a whole, and um, uh, certainly not by uh, uh, building uh, um, new ghettos and uh, separate Jews from the, the rest of the French society. But if you try to, if you try to decipher, who are the people who actually do all those uh, anti-Jewish slurps, those anti-Jewish hate crimes? Do we see more of the Muslim community, of the uh, black community, or uh, is it the, the white community uh, in, in uh, France as well? Well, contrary to the United States, French is not as much shaped in communities, so uh, things are much more complex. And uh, if you look at uh, anti-Israeli protest, you can see uh, uh, various people from various backgrounds. Um, I certainly do disagree with the idea that there is a war between Jews and Muslims in France. Uh, obviously you have um, anti-Semites among uh, Muslims, but you also have anti-Semites among, uh, among Christians or among atheists. So um, I think these things are more complex than that. Uh, for instance, the prominent anti-Semites like Dieudonné mentioned, or someone else called Alain Soral, who are very close to the far right, uh, are not Muslims, so um, uh, the reality is very, is very complex. And um, uh, obviously we have to deal with the problem of fundamental Islam. We're very worried by the fact that some uh, French uh, youngsters have gone to Syria and now in Iraq to, to fight with the jihadists and might come back, just like uh, uh, 
uh, Mehdi Nemush came back to uh, Brussels and killed four people in a in a Jewish uh, in a Jewish museums. However, this does not uh, mean that uh, uh, Muslims in France are anti-Semites as a whole. And um, we build a lot of projects where uh, uh, people of various religions uh, can gather and can express their attachment to uh, French democracy and. Uh, live, and, and, and their will to live together. But the question to be asked, you keep saying, you know, it's still not, it's still not, it's still not. You know, if we look back uh, in what happened in the Second World War, also the Jews in Europe were always saying, oh, it's still not bad, it's still not bad, and then in the end, it was too late. What is, is there like a red line where, uh, you know, the Jewish community in France says, okay, <laughs> enough is enough, we need to go before this gets really ugly? No, look, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to um, uh, diminish uh, the, the, the problems of, of anti-Semitism. But I'm very uh, wary with uh, comparisons. Um, I personally understand the lessons of history, and I'm committed today to uh, defend the Jewish community, because uh, in my family history, I have been uh, um, uh, struck by, uh, by the Holocaust. However, I would make certainly no comparison with what's happening now in Europe, and what happened 70 years ago. Um, uh, the, the, um, there are no governments now whose projects are to uh, eradicate uh, the Jews. Uh, well, certainly not in Europe. Uh, on the contrary, the French government is uh, doing its best to, to, to protect its, its citizens and such are the, the, the neighbors. Um, so I think uh, we, we obviously should, need to be wary and, uh, and, and I ask the um, not only the government, but also uh, all the different parts of society to support all the actions we do against anti-Semitism, whether on the legal side, on the uh, activist side, on the education. Uh, but I uh, certainly do not, do not want to compare our uh, situation with uh, what happened during World War II, because this would be first a false comparison. It will also lessen the uh, terrible situation that happened during the war. So, um, uh, that's my, my, my point on that. However, we do see gr a growing number of Jews in France uh, now immigrating into Israel. We just said in the opening that France is today the third largest Jewish community in the world. And numbers-wise, we see it uh, more and more people, more people from France than from any of the other countries coming to Israel in, in the past year or so uh, because of what's happening, right? Yes, that's true. that's true. There are more people who are living to Israel. It's still a very small amount of the French Jewish population. We're talking about four or five thousand a year out of a population of over five hundred thousand, so it's less than one percent. Um, this is explained by anti-Semitism, but also by other factors uh, like the economy and the will to leave France. That is unfortunately a, a will that is shared by a lot of Jews or non-Jews in, in France because of the lack of uh, opportunities in, in terms of jobs and um, in terms of integration. So um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, are you trying to say that this is a wave that is going to go away in s some period of time? I hope it will go away, but it will certainly go, uh, not go away if uh, we uh, don't carry on and uh, uh, strengthen our, our fight against anti-Semitism. We have had some achievements. Uh, I was uh, previously citing all the battles we had won, for instance, on the Internet. Uh, to finish with the feeling of uh, impunity for uh, people who are using uh, social media as a tool uh, to uh, uh, claim their hate against Jews. But uh, there are definitely a lot of things to say. And uh, um, I expect from the French uh, government and from Europe as a whole more support in our actions against uh, racism. I'm also uh, very uh, um, worried by the rise of far right in France during the last European elections. Uh, the first um, party uh, in terms of numbers of votes was the National Front by Marine Le Pen, the daughter of the uh, uh, notorious Jean-Marie Jean Le Pen. Mm -hmm. And uh, this shows that, unfortunately, the French uh, society is now uh, uh, worried against its, its minorities, and uh, this is certainly very ominous for Jews. So uh, there are reasons to be, to be scared. Uh, the future is not uh, completely bright. But I believe that there are things we can do, and I don't think that uh, uh, living, uh, um, and I don't think that a mass exodus of, of Jews out of Europe uh, is the solution either uh, to make things better or to curb anti-Semitism. So I think that we have a responsibility as Jews to uh, uh, fight and to uh, make sure that uh, uh, all the components of, of the French society understand 
what's happening and uh, um, and 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 may their voice voices heard. Thank you very much, Sasha. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job, and I hope uh, to talk to you soon. And maybe then you can give us a little more brighter things about uh, the future of uh, the Jews in uh, France. Thank you for time. Bye. Thank you. This was Sasha Rangwurtz, who is the president of the Jewish Student Union in France. You know, as I was preparing for the show today, I went to many websites to become even more familiar with the history of hate crimes against Jews. And as controversial as it might sound, throughout history, it seems like almost every people or religion took its turn in hating the Jews at some point in history. It goes way back to the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans. The Christians started uh, persecuting the Jews already during the First Crusade in the second century BC. The British expelled the Jews in the 13th century. The Spanish even had two major periods when they really hated the Jews. First, in the th massacres of the uh, 1391, and then again about 100 years later during the Spanish Inquisition. The Ukrainians had the Cossack massacres in the 17th century. The Russians had the pogroms in the 19th century. French Jewry was under scrutiny during the Dreyfus Affair, and there was the 20th century. That brought, you know, it was one of the cru cruel uh, genocides of our people orchestrated by the Germans. It seems like a never-ending story, and truth be told, no one can really pinpoint why of all people, the Jews, throughout history, always has been, have been a target. But today, we have a Jewish state, thank God, and the United States of America is one of the safest places uh, for Jews in the world, other than Israel, of course. Our next guest is the director of the Jewish American organization, the AJC, which uh, has a strong presence in Europe uh, in, to keep a watchful eye and protect the sometimes vulnerable Jewish populations in that continent. So let's now welcome Simone Rudan, who is joining us from Paris. Bonsoir, Hello. Simone. Bonsoir. So how does the AJC help protect the Jews of Europe these days? Uh, well, first of all, um, AJC is uh, the only Jewish uh, global organization um, and American organization uh, that has a presence uh, in Europe and all over, um, all over Europe. Um, it is um, advocating on behalf of the Jewish people on all common interests, um, ranging from uh, Israel, uh, protecting Israel security, uh, the nuclear Iran, and obviously also um, intervening in terms of um, the fight against anti-Semitism uh, in France, in Germany, uh, in Belgium, uh, and actually in the rest of Europe. Um, we have developed over the past years really, um, over the past 10 to 20 years, a very, very strong presence, a very strong network uh, within Europe amongst political class, uh, amongst civil society, and are continuously um, really advocating um, to, to make sure that the governments in Europe continue protect, to protect Jewish life and the Jewish community all over in Europe. Now, when I talked uh, to a lot of uh, Jewish American organizations and all the meetings that they had recently due to what's going on in Israel, you know, they keep saying, we are observing the situation. Uh, are you also just observing or are you actually doing something, you know, action-wise? No, we're doing more than, uh, than just observing. Um, obviously, I'm also the ears of AJC clearly um, in France, but we're doing far more than just observing. Uh, we have, uh, for the past uh, 15 years, really uh, continuously trying, uh, trying to raise awareness amongst political leaders, uh, amongst uh, opinion leaders, amongst civil society on the threat that is actually posing uh, anti-Semitism, not only to Jewish communities in Europe, but beyond that, um, actually 
to the very values of, uh, of Europe itself. Um, so we are doing far more than that. We're in constant contact with, uh, with the government. Uh, we're in constant contact with, uh, the parliament, with parliamentarians. Uh, we're working, for example, right now on the, on the establishment of a parliamentary inquiry committee on uh, the fight of, against anti-Semitism um, in France. We are consulting with government uh, officials, but also with the French Jewish community, which is very active in particular, and I want to salute them, the CREF, the French Jewish uh, umbrella organization here, and consulting with them on what kind of actions can be done um, and taken concretely in order to protect Jewish communities here in France. Now, we've seen now in, in recent months because of Operation Protective Edge, kind of like the genie coming out of the bottle uh, with a lot of anti-Israeli uh, rally, rallies, uh, which of course, you know, is the same as being anti-Jewish. Uh, but do you feel that uh, everything that has happened in Israel kind of let loose a lot of uh, things that were kind of subtle under uh, the radar until now? Well, in France, uh, it hasn't been under the radar. It has been above the radar for quite a while. So um, it's really something that had started about 14 years ago with the beginning of the Second Intifada, when a rise of anti-Semitism uh, started in France. Uh, and really, for the past 14 years, we have seen a constant increase um, of anti-Semitism. Um, for the first few years, really for the first four or five years, uh, the government at the time didn't really want to acknowledge the, the, the intensity of the problem. Uh, this has started to change uh, with the then, at the time, uh, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, who was the Minister of Interior, who then became the President of France a few years later, and that is definitely also the case uh, today. Um, so it's not really, um, it's a sort of a slow evolution over the past 14 years. Um, you shouldn't forget that um, in France people have died. Uh, in 2006, a young man by the name of Ilan Halimi was killed by a gang who called themselves the Gang of Barbers, uh, abducted this young man, um, held him hostage, and at the end of the day killed him because only he was Jewish. And um, a few years ago, in 2012, uh, a terrorist, an Islamist terrorist by the name of Mohamed Meha, before having killed uh, three uh, French soldiers, two of them actually being Muslim, uh, went into a Jewish school in the southern city of France, Toulouse, um, and killed uh, Jewish school children and a teacher. Um, so in France, France is actually the only country in Europe, and actually I think, yeah, in Europe, where Jews have died because they were Jewish. So what we have seen over the past few weeks it is sort of the boiling point of everything that's been going on for the past 14 years. But it's been very much on the surface uh, for, for, for a very long time. Now, what is starting to change slightly is that people are starting to be aware, and in particular civil society and the media, of the immensity of the problem, um, of uh, the depth of the problem. And also, to some extent, with everything that is going on in the rest of the world, with everything that is going on in Iraq, etc., people are also trying to sort of connect the dots now and try are starting to understand that it is a wider problem that is not only concerning Jews, but it is sort of the concerning our very values and are concerning the Western values. Mm -hmm. No, I have to ask you, I've asked this uh, Sasha as well. I mean, when will be the point that the Jews in France will say, okay, this is a place that is too dangerous for us to live in. Um, I don't know if you have read my article. I wrote an article a couple of weeks ago uh, that was published in JNS um, um, that actually where I spoke exactly about that. Um, and where I said that um, I'm a mother of two young boys, uh, and from time to time I ask myself the question whether I'm actually a responsible parent to continue living in France and having my children grow up in a country where it is potentially a threat and where the identity um, becomes a problem. Um, the reality is that people are already starting to think about it. Um, they're starting to 
be a slow rise of Aliyah. It's far from being an exodus. And it's also linked to other issues, economic issues, etc. Um, but it is for the first time uh, in, about, in, in about 14 years that the number of departures of French Jews leaving to Israel has doubled. Um, it used to be the case that between 1,000 to 2,000 people were leaving uh, France to, to emigrate to Israel. Uh, we can expect that by the end of the year, there will be about 4,000 people. Now, again, it's, France is the biggest Jewish community in Europe. It's the second largest diaspora community. Uh, we speak about 600 to 650,000 Jews. It's only, it's, I mean, it's less than 1%. Um, but what is more more worrying is not so much that people are leaving right now, it is the people's mindset. It is just as I'm asking myself the question of whether I should be having my children grow up in, in, in France, most uh, Jewish parents and, and youngsters ask themselves definitely if they have a future here in France. Definitely something that everybody needs to think about these days and, and you know we need to make the decisions you know, a minute before it's too late, because of the history of the Jewish people, of course, never to forget. Sure. Absolutely. Simone, merci. Thank you very merci much. À vous. Bonne nuit to Paris. <laughs> merci beaucoup. Bye bye. À très bientôt. Au revoir. This was Simone Rudan, the director of the AJC, the American Jewish Committee in Paris. And this concludes another edition of In the News. Before we go, let me thank our staff here at Shalom TV, without whom all of this would not be possible. Our director, Sloan Copeland. Our associate director, Dara Golub. Our technical director, Serge Goldberg. Our editors, Mark Baker and Corey Sivikov. Our producers, Carrie Lilenthal and Sahar Mulevich. And the one person who makes all of this possible, Mark Golub, for whom I'm sitting in right now. I'm Ron Jacobson. Thank you for watching.